Well, growing up in the 80s, you know, it was, uh, it was a strange time. During the state of emergency, intense repression, a period which had started in 1960 and it ended in 1990. At that time, our families always talked about the politics of the day because for me as a young child, that kind of gave me a sense of what was wrong. When you got your degree, it did not mean that that was what you will become for the rest of your life. But it also carried with it the capacity to determine your fate, that you will become working class for the rest of your life. So the people were treated as vassals, as these subjects. And so they never would talk back. They, would never, they were just seen simply as an extension of the tool, extension of the plow, extension of the tractor, to say, I want you up at four, whatever time you must work and so on. So I'm just saying, let's look at that historical background. That mindset is still there. I'm elated, you know, that in my lifetime I'm seeing this. It's an African renaissance. We are wanting to decolonize Africa. We're wanting to decolonize South Africa. Obviously, the first one that has been mentioned all over the country is free education. But now we know the institutions will end up saying to us, no, we cannot provide that for you unless the government does it. In the end of the day, it is the government that is, that is failing us as students. We feel that uh, is a situation where our president is sleeping in a 250 million rand house and we have students sleeping inside the library. This constitution is not uh, a dead document. It is a, a document that compels all of us to transform the society and the world, the real world, not only the world in our heads, but the world out there.